Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss yield to maturity YTM versus the current yield. The naming sounds familiar yield to maturity many students confuse the two versus the current yield. What are we talking about here? We're looking at what interest rate when we talk about yield to maturity that the investors is earning when they hold the bond until the bond mature that's yield to maturity so what return yield is return what rate of return am i earning if i hold the bond until it matures and until all the payments are made and i hold it till the end now in order to find out what's the yield to maturity we have to find out how to value a bond investment so the value to value a bond investment you need the bond price how much you paid for the bond the payments on that bond and time until maturity and obviously of course the face value because we're going to assume the face value for us is one bond and that bond is a thousand dollar so if you know how much you paid for the bond now which it which will be different than a thousand dollar you're going to get a thousand dollar later the coupon payment is how much you're going to be getting and the time is how long do you have to hold it until it matures this will give us yield to maturity then we will discuss the current yield let's start by looking at the yield to maturity computation before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com our corporate finance course is best for online students and students who are taking corporate finance courses we cover financial statements discounted cash flow stock valuation bond valuation npv and capital investment decisions cost of capital risk and return as well as other topics our course include lectures as well as multiple choice questions go ahead and start your free trial today no obligation we are here to help your success starts here i will walk you through the bond pricing step by step first let's set up the equation to find the bond price that we discussed in the prior session remember the bond is equal to the present value all of all future payments which are what what's the present value of the payments and the present value of the face amount remember we talked about this in the prior session so the value of the bond is the sum of the present value of the payments plus the present value of the face value this is what you will get at the end r because you're discounting this under r so r is the yield to maturity how much an investor would earn if they buy this bond and wait until they mature and they until the bond matures and they get the face value t is the time period and is the number of years let's take a look at this example so let's assume we paid for a bond 950 dollars that's the price today this is the price and this bond is paying 60 dollar annual payment for five years so five years left and at the end of five years we'll get one thousand dollar so how do we know how much we are earning so we know everything except the r except the rate of return now what can we do we could use try and trial and errors we could just input a input a rate of return and see if it would equal to 950 so let's use trial and error now obviously i'm showing you the trial and error because you need to understand the process now obviously an excel sheet can do it your your uh, finance calculator can do it but i want you to understand the process so we would use seven percent to, to find out if seven percent if we assume seven percent here will give us 950 dollars then we know we are earning seven percent on this bond well let's use seven percent using seven percent going to the time value of money to discount the annuity the sixty dollars at five periods at seven percent the factor is four point one zero zero two then we will get a thousand dollar to discount the one thousand dollar which will be five years at seven percent the factor is 0 0.7130 now if we perform the computation take 60 multiplied by 4.1002 1000 multiplied by 0 0.7130 will get 24601 plus 70 uh, 713 would equal to 959 which is not equal to 950 so seven percent is not the yield to maturity so at 7%, we got close, but it's slightly higher than the actual market of 750. What are we going to do? We're going to try 8%. We're just using, we're just 
trial and error if we do the same thing at 8% we will find out that the price is 920 so the third under the first one we said the price is we find out the price is what the price is 959 little above 959 and now what we find out the price is 920 which is too low so what does that mean so the price is between the, no, not the price the rate of return is between what it's between seven and eight percent now what what can we do we can try different rate between seven and eight percent we can try three seven point three five seven point five just kind of going in through the present value table or through a financial calculator until we get to 950 now we know it's going to be closer to seven because at seven percent remember it's going to be closer to seven percent why because at seven percent it was 959 so it's a little bit more than seven percent which is to be more specific 7.15 this method is called plug and chug because we manually test different rates now this is what is the yield to maturity the yield to maturity is when you bought this bond let's go back here when you bought this bond let's go back at the beginning when you bought this bond you paid you paid 950 you're getting six payments of I'm sorry five payments of $60 and equal to five and you're gonna get the $1,000 one time but you don't know what you're earning if you hold it if you hold this bond till the end you would earn 7.15 percent so this is called yield to maturity which is totally different Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A financial analyst compares two bond. Bond A trade at a discount, bond B trade at a premium. Both have identical coupon rates at mat and maturity. Okay, good. Which of the following statement best explain the difference between yield to maturity and the current yield between bond A and bond B? What can we say about bond A and bond B given this information? So they both paying the same rate. Let's assume 5%. Bond A is paying 5% um, and bond B is paying. So bond A is paying 5%. Bond B is paying 5%. So from the uh, coupon rate, they're paying the same. Okay. How about maturity? Maturity. It's the same. What? It's five years. It's the same. The same maturity. So however the only difference between them is bond a is traded at a discount bond b is traded at a premium and what does that mean it means bond a you bought it if we're talking about a one thousand dollar bond you bought it less than one thousand bond b you paid for it more than one thousand so the one thousand is the par so what's going to happen at the end when everything settles bond a will give you a gain bond a will give you an additional gain so the yield to maturity will be greater than the current yield because bond A will give you the discount. You remember you bought it at a discount. Let's assume you bought it at 940. There's a $60 discount you will get at the end. Bond B, because you bought it at a premium, $1,075, you're going to lose that $75. You paid it up front. You have a loss. So bond A has a higher current yield than a higher current yield and lower YTM. As far as the current yield, as far as the current yield, let's look at the current yield. Bond A, let's look. Let's look at YTM. Bond A has a higher current yield and lower YTM. No, bond A will have a higher YTM. Why? Because it's a discounted bond. So A is out. Bond B YTM exceeds current yield because it includes a capital gain. No, bond B will not because it's going to have a capital loss because it's bought at a premium. A B is out. Bond A, bond A, YTM exceeds the current yield, yes, because it includes a capital gain. That's correct. So bond A, because it's bought at a discount, it will have a YTM greater than the current yield because the YTM, once it matures, you're going to get that discount that you did not pay for up front when you purchased the bond. So C is the correct answer. Let's make sure D is incorrect as well. Bond B's YTM exceeds bond a that's incorrect bond a will exceed ytm of bond a will exceed now again i explain ytm uh, in depth so if you're not familiar uh, if, if you do not understand this question go to go back and view the lectures what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice 
true false lectures anything that's going to help you whether you are a CPA accounting student finance student CMA invest in yourself that's the best investment you could make good luck study hard and of course stay safe